Hey folks, Quillington here, and welcome back to our pre-release Let's Play of Stellaris, and welcome back to the Quill Sovereignty. Sandwiched between two different people. I have to say, of um, of the games that I've played so far, the little test games, I guess I've done three starts at this point. This is by far, I think, the closest we've sort of been squeezed in between our neighbors. But luckily, they're both relatively nice fellows. They are all... where is it? Hang on. It is over here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They are, they're both uh, xenophiles. Um, these are even pacifists. Uh, the Pex Credonian Coalition are not pacifists, but they're still xenophiles, and that's pretty good. We've got our embassies uh, set up over there. We've got two embassies, and we're going to try to improve relations with them for now, because uh, early, early warfare, not much point, because until you research transports, there's really not a whole lot of invading you can do. And I'd much rather focus entirely just on... Um, on expansion right now so we are six months away from finishing our colony ship which will also require 350 minerals is one of the reasons i'm banking it looks like we could have fit in probably another science ship or something like that but i don't know i mean there's there's a real cost to doing that parksis over here has got another tundra world really so that's the one that's inhabitable over here this actually this planet here which isn't inhabitable would give us three engineering research so we have enough minerals to fit that in. But that's the thing, like, if we had built another um, colony ship, that take, or sorry, another uh, science ship, that requires, what, about 100 minerals? Oh, it's only 64. It's, oh, I am getting a 25% discount. But yeah, it might have been worth sneaking in there. I'm not sure, because then also you split your experience points between two science ships, whereas here we just try to have our one become as high level as possible and we'll be more successful. So I'm not sure. Science ship is done. Moving on to another system, right? We ended it the last time. And... I'm going to go up to fast speed. Now, of course, our neighbors still haven't expanded. Now, we could have finished our tech already if we hadn't investigated quite so many aliens. I think one of the aliens that we'd met is actually uh, one, if not two of these, um, that we'd met here. They decided to investigate us before we investigated Hostile them. Fleet detected. Hostile fleet, but it's passing through. Just space-borne organics, nothing to worry about there. And yeah, we'll finish the Epsilon Aliens as soon as we are done our colonization tech. We've got a lot of money banked, which is good, because the colonies are very, very expensive to maintain. Uh, the other thing we could do is we should have time, actually. I'm going to sneak in another Corvette. That's the other thing we could be doing. I sneak in a Corvette here so we've got a little bit more of a war fleet. I know I was talking about waiting until we got a little bit more of the military techs, but I think it's going to be fine to sneak it in. It should finish. Um, yeah, it finishes quite quickly. So it should be right lined up well with this colony ship construction. So that's going to be okay. And then is there anything else on the planet? That's the other thing, right? If you're building more science ships, you don't improve your planet as much that we want to do. Well, construction complete. Research complete. Well, there's our research. Oh, two research is finished at the same time. The survey speed. Oh, we've got our first rare technology. These don't come up very often. They're not necessarily automatically better, but this is a new module for our star bases. So I can install it on um, on our star base in orbit of a planet. It gives us 50% more sensor range, which is nice, and 10% more all the science outputs. I think that's too hard to resist, although I really, really like the... Um, the deflector technology on the ships. Also, there are these re these rare strategic resources scattered throughout the galaxy, and you need to unlock technology to be able to find them in the first place. And there's a lot of value there, but I think this is great. I think the observatory is going to be fantastic. Society research finished, so I'm going to grab... I like the border range. We can also view other Empire survey data on planets within their borders. Interesting. The border range is going to be quite good. It actually pushes out our borders, and I'm a big fan of that. Uh, and over here, we're going to make sure to start our colony ship. It's actually discounted. Wow, yeah, these discounts are crazy good. I'm going to clear that and be ready to improve that down the road. Okay. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just go and uh, babysit this system over here. To make sure when we send our colony ship, it is perfectly fine and safe. So we're just building that. It does take a long time to build, but that's all right. And we are going to check out this system here. Which should fall within our borders once we colonize this, and especially once we finish that tech. All right, spaceport being done. That's fine. Fast speed. Constructor ship just finished all their duties. <laughs> Duty. Um... 
And what I think I'll do is I'll... I really have nothing to do with to move to Krant. Oh, unless we want to build a warp gate here, which actually I'm going to do. We're going to build a warp gate here. A wormhole station. Um, it doesn't expand our range too much, but... I suppose if this falls within our borders, I could just build it there. Never mind. I'm just going to move to Krant, and we're going to wait. Because at some point it'll fall be within our borders. Ooh. Physics research, quite nice. That's one planet with four science here. It's this uh, atmos... It's this... What is it? I guess I have to click on the planet. It's a tomb world. Oh, space piracy! Space piracy has started. The Star Raiders are going to start preying on my ships. Now, where are they located right now? Do we have an idea? Probably back over here. Yeah, military station. Star Raiders have at least one military station in the system. And they have wormholes over here. And then they have their pirate fleet, which currently has a strength of 78, which... Our first vanguard is better then. So I'm going to send it to Sudbury right away. Because we have to always warp out from our home system. So I'm going to do that. And then try to catch these pirates nice and early. Anomaly found. Anomaly, 15% chance of failure. Well, how often can we fail a 15% chance of failure things? Probably well above 15%, knowing my luck. Okay, constructor ship's in place. The vanguard is here. It's probably... Okay, how far away are we from completing that colony ship? Quite far. I'm just trying to decide. I don't know, 116 versus 78 is pretty good. Alright, let's warp over there. You can see the wormhole construction charging up. Which charges up a lot faster than some other engines. Evading hostile fleet. Oh yeah, you went to evasion, which is not what I want. I want you on passive. So you don't have to evade right now. In fact, I'm hoping the hostile fleet comes to me. Oh, they're attacking my military outpost. The problem is it's right next to their military outpost, which I don't want to tackle with. Are you kidding me? Not only did we fail the 15% chance again, but it actually spawned... It spawned enemies over here. Our science ship is in combat and might very well die. I think it just blunk out in time. Oh my god, what terrible, awful luck. So what I was going to do over here is going to say, listen, what we're going to do is we're going to go and attack their warp gate. So they're going to be stuck in the system, these pirates. My poor science... Like, what the hell? We can't complete a single anomaly? This is actually really slowing us down. This is really bad luck. Really rough luck here. So I think they're actually planning on warping away. Yeah, that is what they're doing. Now, I don't think I could catch them in time, because the warps are quite quick. So all they have to do is, if they're in a system with a warp gate, they just have to be outside of the um, the gravity well. So they've warped one of my systems. They're probably going to go and pick on one of my um, my mining bases. But we're going to blow up their warp gate, their, again, their wormhole generator, so that they cannot leave that system. Oh, trade deal! What do you want? Star charts or char star charts? Yes, I absolutely agree. Are you not wary anymore? Is that possible? No, they're both wary. But you still want to initiate a bit of a trade. Okay. So, you know, we're not getting much out of these star charts, but it's it's something. Station under attack. And one of our stations is under attack. Engaged. And we're going to engage over here. So technically, this does have a slight offensive capability. It's got a military power of 0 0.25. So I think it occasionally fires back. Actually, I'm not even confident about that. Mostly just has a big bucket of hit points. Meanwhile, science ship. God damn it. Well, go and just survey another system. Hopefully you can find an anomaly that you'll actually succeed at. That's very frustrating. Are the pirates coming back? No, the pirates, if that's the pirates, are going to another system. I don't think it is the pirates. I think they're still busy blowing up one of my mining bases. So there's a lot of hit points on this station. Stations do auto-repair themselves. You can see this little pop-up. Ten days after not being attacked, they'll start repairing themselves. I don't know how quickly they do it, but... Now, if they went and blew it up my warp gate in my capital, then I would be stuck out here. But luckily, that's not where they are. Now, I'm gonna want to take out this pirate base, but not like this, because... I think I would, I actually think I would lose because of the way some of the conflict gets dealt with. So, 
Now we're going to go here. We may not be able to reach them before they blow up this military base. In fact, I probably should have just gone and done this in the first place. Now that I think about it. But oh well. Construction ship, you're just idle over there. This is within... Oh, this is within my borders too. Oh, right! Because our borders do push out over time. We haven't even finished that 20% you know, border range thing. But the borders do expand on their own, so we can send out our mining ship over there and get some stuff done at least. And warp. There we go. And maybe... No, I think it's about to get blowed up. There it goes. Well, that's too bad, but we will catch these guys. We've still got our leader. He's not particularly experienced, and he's just got the reduced shipped upkeep, which is too bad. So we're going to have to rebuild that. Aye. But these ships are basically stuck. They've got nowhere to go. I probably should have just hunted the zone in the first place and not worried about the warp generator. So, over in our capital... Oh, we're done on our colony ship. Yes, we are. I'm going to queue up some more corvettes so I can get a decent fleet to go after that base. And the colony ship, I can send it here manually. But the other thing, with uh, as long as you've got one built, you can click on the planet that you want to colonize and hit the colonize button, and then you get to choose your ship, and you get to choose where to land it. It's worth noting, once this administrative center gets upgraded, it'll give plus one energy, food, and minerals to anything adjacent. So ideally, you would like to combo it that way. Um, I don't know if it uses the base production of the tile. It feels like this would be the best spot to put it here because it will boost these um, these side ones quite a bit. And actually, this will be a pretty productive tile once you get that bonus, which does take a while. You need to get population five and it takes another 350 minerals to upgrade it to the next level. But that'll get us started anyway. All right, fleet over here. Crushed it. We haven't lost anything. Situation log updated. Lovely. You are going to go and repair. Oh, right, we've also got some debris that we can scan. Anytime there's a space battle like that, you can go and scan the debris, get some materials, maybe a little bit of science. Very handy. So we'll uh, try to do that through our science ship after this. Wow, we got a lot of stuff in this system that we can mine with our construction ship. Wonderful. So Krant's going to be annoying. Pirate Flotilla. We'll probably go and clear that out. And then we'll continue scanning Krant, and again, the idea is I'm probably going to build a warp gate here. It'll give us uh, a fair expansion to our territory here, and again, put these guys within our reach if we decide we want to go after them. The time project here is because debris eventually goes away, but it does last for many, many days. So I'm not too stressed about it. Colony ship still working to leave Sudbury. So ex faster engines would be quite nice for us, because... Um, um, just within a system, it would be nice to move around faster. And the evasion, evasion is really good for combat. System survey complete. Excellent. Wonderful. So I'm going to send you down to Parsacs here. Yeah, oh, there you go. And you're just going to check out this debris. It's not like it's in a rush to expire or anything like that. It's not the most important thing. But I feel good cleaning all that stuff up. So our colony ship is on the way to the planet. complete. And research of nanocomposite armor is done. Wonderful. What else can we get? Engineering facilities, type of science, this defensive platform that we can build, mineral processing plant. Planet unique, produces two, so it's like a mine, but also gives us 10% boost on the planet as well. Well, that's not too shabby. Slightly more research, too. No, I think I'm going to take this one. It unlocks a bunch of stuff. Again, the capital, the, the capacity is not critical right now, but it's still nice to sort of have. Uh, population here isn't capped yet, but is working that way. This is going to be where the next one is going to land. We still have this weird tile that I have to make a decision about at some point. But I don't know. Right now it's okay. Uh, since you are building up, I'm going to go ahead and get you a hydroponics farm there. And we will build a research lab here. I'm just trying to decide if I want to start it right now. Maybe I'll hold off. So fleets are still being built. Repairs are complete. Surveys complete. Time project, that's fine. Oh, what is this? Non-aggression pledge. 
Absolutely. So we're going to be friendly with them while we continue to expand our own territory holdings here. The first, the Quill Colony. Our colony ship has gently touched down on the wide, empty steppe of Ratargas. The chosen landing site lies behind a large ridge which shelters it from the cold wind, and there is an open body of fresh water not far away. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement, and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first, the Quill City on an alien world. It's a great day for the Quill Sovereignty. And that gives us some extra research for the first go. And there we go. The borders haven't pushed out yet, but they will. So, this planet, which I'm going to rename to... Charlesy, over here. There you go. Borders are starting to move, though. It's going to take, well, it's actually 13 months, I think. We missed it. But it's going to take a while before it becomes a proper colony at that point. Uh, but then we can start, you know, working it, doing different things like that. All right. Still need to clear out the system. And again, borders should reach there. But it may have to wait until this becomes a proper colony. Still, we'll get there. Constructor ship is idle. Um, I think you can just go ahead and build mining stations. We actually still have this mandate here. We're at three or four. Oh, so if we build this one, that'll actually complete that mandate and give us more influence, which we can definitely spend on a few things. I wonder here on our um, homeworld if... if it would be worth doing some of this. I'm going to be a little late now, but that, I think, actually would be a great one to pass on our new planet once it's colonized. Charlesy over here. We're going to pass the cheaper building cost one and the reduced building time, which is all going to be great. Void Cloud of Strength 178, so... Debris analyzed. Debris, so we got a little bit of research from analyzing that debris with the science ship. Not much, but it's something. I'll survey that. So, yeah, how many more things do we have in the queue here? A couple more. May as well let them finish. We actually have a force limit of 13 currently. It's modified based on our current, you know, religion or whatever. Or not religion, government type. So we're losing money because our colony does cost 8 per uh, month, which is a fair bit. But we're not really losing much. We're losing a tenth of a credit right now. But as we build a few more of these stations, it will continue to go up. But that's okay because we'll also get more energy from these places, which is all wonderful. Notice that we can no longer build a orbital base around Charlesy because they are mutually exclusive. Epsilon aliens, which we still haven't researched. Do I want to do that now? Yeah, I did want to do that. So I'm going to do that. Probably it's just the space cows, but we might get some more passive bonuses, which would be very nice. Let's go up to fast speed over here. How's my neighbors? Cordial! And still wary over here. They're still wary, but these guys are cordial. Ah, we fulfilled the minor mandate, which gave us a bunch more influence as well. So what can we do with you? Right, we have the non-aggression pack, right? Mm -hmm. What we could do is get a research agreement. So what this does is you get a 25% discount for researching anything that your other person has. So they actually have six techs I don't, and I have six techs they don't. So we might be able to get a discount. Oh, they're not willing to do it, really. Oh, they'll only trade with allies. And I think we need a technology to form alliances. I think we're okay as is. I mean, we could guarantee each other's alliance or independence, but no. All right. So we'll just leave that be. That's fine. Construction queue. All right. Oh, that's the spaceport is done. All right. So our fleets here, just select both in the outliner and tell them to merge together. They'll fly at each other and combine. 256, decent combat strength. We are going to go and clear out whatever the hell this was. And then our construction ship, uh, go ahead and build the research stations over here. Please and thank you. And very soon our borders will expand to Krant. And then we'll go and be able to finish the survey here, as well as um, hook up. Like, that is one place. One building, or one planet by itself, which would give four research. That's massive. That's absolutely gargantuan. We haven't really been buffing our research so far. But I gotta say, our mineral rate is fantastic. And that is very, very, very important. So do we have any modules for a spaceport that we can add yet? No, we don't have any of those. We do have the defense modules, and that's that. Uh, we don't have another... Oh, we do have a Tundra World down here. 
So there's no reason not to colonize this, right? It's small, which is too bad. But I think we're going to go ahead and colonize it regardless. So let's build another colony ship over there. Again, that will that will give us a, a kick in the credits, but this one's going to be done soon. Then the minus eight will go away from that. So we'll try to have another colony going on. All right, we've got space combat. Well, that's a hostile fleet. And our own people are set to passive, but I did target them over there. So they will go and start that fight, and then we'll clear out the system. Good stuff. And that's a decent system for mining as well. I might put an outpost over here. Since I don't have any system intention of doing that. Do we have vision over their system? Do we know what kind of planets they settle? I don't know. I don't know if that, that sort of looks like a jungle planet Special to me, but I'm not sure. Complete. There we go. You're in the border. Special project. Oh, that's the Epsilon Aliens. We'll get the pop-up in a second. The Tianki. They're the space cows. Perfectly chill. Hunting them would be a net loss anyway. No point in hunting them, apparently. So they say. So you're fully surveyed. Great. You can go over here and survey this. By the time you get there, that battle should be over. Hopefully. Well, yeah, because he has to blink home and then blink out here. And either here or Callum. So if I do build a frontier outpost here, I could build the warp, uh, the uh, the wormhole generator over here. But I think I'll just build it in Krant. Okay, so you are done. You've taken a slight scratch to your paint. I'll go ahead and do a token repair, especially since it's one ship that took a fair bit of damage. So we'll repair you, and then we'll send you out to hunt down some more jerk asses that are causing some issues for me. You're done that. We're currently losing money, so that sucks. But I think... What I'm going to do is prioritize building a wormhole station over here. There's a lot of space out to our east. There's, there's space in both directions. We really kind of don't need to go north as badly, but east, west, and south would all open up a lot of new options. So getting a warp gate there would be nice. Colony is properly established here on Charlesy. You have no governor, so let's go ahead and recruit a governor. What do we have? Uh, cheaper to remove blockers, more engineering output and science and all that. Just more lifespan might actually be good because you'll just skill up and be generic and then you'll be handy. I don't know how many blockers we need to clear on Charlesy here. We don't have the tech to remove these blockers right now. So, I think I'm going to be fine with just grabbing the resilient one. So that they'll have lots of time to level up and become better and better and better. And here we're going to grab the infrastructure projects which reduces the building cost and construction time and we're going to try to spam a bunch of them in the next 10 years and we are here and so we can't upgrade this so right now this disassembled ship shelter just gives two food we could upgrade it later to the planetary administration um, but you need at least five pop on the planet so I think what I'm gonna do here even though it's gonna mean losing these minerals I'm going to go ahead and build... Oh yeah, it's just basic one. You can't build the level 2 until you got the planetary administration, which is too bad. So, do we change trade one mineral for one food? Maybe not. But I'll start building on the other side over here. And we'll build a basic mine. And these can be upgraded later on. I suppose I could just queue up a bunch of stuff. Or up over here, we'll set up a hydroponics farm so that we can get some more food. That'll be quite handy. So these are just going to be in the queue. And we'll get that started and we'll come back. I don't want to spend all my minerals right now. Um, we are in our spaceport. All oh, right, we've got that. Uh, I was going to say, I'd like a couple more ships to fill up my fleet. May as well max it out. Oh, we've also got some debris from blowing up those guys over here. So we'll have to go and check that out at some point. Although right now we are just sciencing in the system and I'm okay with that. Let's go up to fastest for now because I think we mostly just have to wait for a bunch of stuff to finish. We're good on money. Could start spending the influence on, you know, some more edicts and things. Um, we are spending one per month from our running edict. Right here, the drone optimization. Which I could remove, but I'm okay with it right now. Alright, inactive buildings. Let us know on Charlesy. We have a building here, but no one's actually working this tile. Which is fine. Which is fine. I'm building them earlier than we actually have the population, but I'm building them now because I've got it cheap and I don't really have that many other things to do with my money at this time. Oh, we could build a spaceport. We don't have the money and we have to choose a, a module and we don't actually have any of these unlocked. So we have to unlock a module and then we have to get some, we need to get enough minerals and we'll get a spaceport there. It'll act as planetary defense. It's also somewhere else where you can build something. What? What's detected? 
Oh, the wormhole station is done. Ah, oh, there we go. So now you can see our range has increased a fair bit. It's not bad. So go ahead and build me more mining stations here. That is fine. Spaceborne Organics. Who are bypassing us, so that's okay. Fleet has been repaired. So, oh, we're going to go and blow up the pirate station over here. I'm going to send them here, and I'm just going to tell them to be aggressive. So they'll automatically find the pirate station with a, a strength of, like, 110 or something like that. So our fleet of 256 should be able to handle that just fine. And then the pirates will be a non-issue at that point. Construction. That's Charles E. All its construction queue is done, and it doesn't have the population to run it right now. So I will wait a little bit longer before I go and spam a few of those out. System Although it's still nice to get the discount. Complete. System survey done. So the science ship, I'm actually going to send it over here to just research this debris. And another colony ship is done, so we're going to go to Parsacs over here. No, Parsacs 3. I'm going to colonize this. Not a very big planet, but it's still going to be worthwhile, I think. Um, trying to figure out, like, to maximize the adjacency bonus. I don't know. The other thing I don't know is if it will stack. Like, will this turn into a four-food tile? I guess we'll have to try it. We'll eat the uh, the minerals. At least it'll still be adjacent to a mineral food energy. It won't give a boost to that research, but that's going to be okay. And it doesn't do that until we upgrade it anyway. So I'm going to put it there and hope that actually gives us a four food tile. I'm not sure if it does. So if I look here, if I look at Charlesy and this tile here, yeah, it still includes the base tile. So landing on something that is strong with food is going to be quite good. Or you could say food plus minerals. Um, because the minerals will come into account later on. Oh, mineral processing is done. Okay, let's pause there. Oh, that's us fighting the pirates. Um, okay, well, we could get even better armor for our ships, but I'm going to grab the nuclear missiles here. Uh, of course, we are currently equipped with laser beams. Nuclear missiles, I think, are equivalent to our current uh, laser beam. So that's not necessarily an improvement, but it does unlock a module here, which you can equip on a spaceport, which will give us the ability to build another spaceport. Or, oh, improved spaceport gives us the ability, a module here for Corvette assembly yards. I, I don't think we can start with that. I think it needs to start with a kind of defense module as the base, and we have no option there. We have to start with that. Uh, adding the uh, the Corvette assembly yards later on for faster speed and cheaper cost is quite nice. Also unlocks the level 2 spaceport, which allows us to construct destroyers there as well. That's a really, really, really good tech. So without a module, we still can't build another spaceport. But do we really need two spaceports? I mean, defensively it's nice, but we can mostly just build them all in one place. It's not super the fastest, but we're not always building ships. All right, we're going to go with the improved spaceport. It's something I feel that we're going to need to get at some point regardless. So what the hell, let's go for it. And there's a new election coming along. Looks like most likely uh, Torba will get re-elected again with another off-world minor edict, which seems fine to me. I don't feel the urge to support anyone else necessarily. So our battle here against the pirate base. And we have taken a lot of damage on the one Corvette, the Alam Tanak. Hopefully it's going to be okay. It's the only one that's taking any damage. I could split it off into a separate... Well, no, you can't... I can't do that now. After battle, I can split it off into a separate fleet and have it run away. But I can't have an individual ship run. So it might get obliterated. Nope, we won it. Lovely. And then they just go back to wherever they were when they came into the system. But I will tell them to, once again, just go and repair themselves. Wonderful. And we do have some debris there to pick up at some point. Okay. Situation log updated. New ruler, and we've got the new mandate. Which again, assuming, yeah, another minor mandate. And data analyzed from some debris. 20% progression towards fusion power. Very nice. And just some free points towards generic fusion research. See, that the debris analysis is actually really valuable. So over here in Elliot. And yeah, see, so we can, um, we don't, it's not showing up on the map right now, but we can turn that on so that we remember that there's debris over here. And we select the science ship and then select that in research. I think it's got to be there. If we go to, it'll zoom in, but I can select the science ship here and then right click and do that. 
It would be nice, I think, if the research log, if you hit this, it gave you, just like when you're colonizing, gave you a list of science ships, maybe the idle ones, or maybe all of them, sorted with the idle ones at the top, so you can quickly pick one and then find it. I'll turn off the tracking because that would just be distracting. It is nice that you can do that, though. All right, and everyone's busy. We have a decent amount of minerals, but we're kind of a little hurt for money right now, so I don't think we're going to go and build another colony ship. So I think what we do is we build two more Corvettes, like that. Do we want to redesign the Corvettes first? Let me just start with the brand new one. And I like the one with the three smalls. I actually find the DPS works a little bit better. So we still just have baseline red lasers. So we'll equip that there. And our modules, we do have armor and then reactors. So we're going to put enough reactors in here so that our power is not negative. And then fill the remaining slots with armor. That's not bad. We do have the iron thrusters and the ship-mounted gravitic sensors which would be an upgrade to what we had before. Uh, let's call this one... Oh, I don't have my list of subscribers up. Hey, what? It's live stream day today, so I'm actually just going to open up the live stream uh, chat and pick someone out of there. They won't even know. They won't even know for five more days, six more days from when I'm recording this. Um, so we are going to have... Do, 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 do. We're going to have... Hmm, none of you guys are subscribers. Ba, ba, ba. We're going to have Flamebeard. Oh, that's a good name. The Flamebeard over here. So we're going to save that design. So now it shows up in the list. I'm actually going to go and remove the um, automatically made Corvette. So this way it's the only Corvette class that's around, which means if our ships are docked, okay, they're heading back now. Once they're there, we'll be able to update them. So in Subaru, I'm going to make sure to explicitly be building these Flamebeards. Thank you. So that'll bring us up to 13. I think we can go over this, but I think it costs us more can mainly be increased by your number of pops and spaceports. Yeah, building spaceports gives you a lot more naval capacity. Six per spaceport. So that's, yeah, that's pretty substantial. So if we did build one around Charlesy and whatever our next planet is going to be, that is going to have a lot of value over there. Bum, 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 bum. Well, I guess we got to go put a cut in here. Um, it's entirely possible this will be my final recording of this before I actually leave for England to play... Uh, in the multiplayer event. What is this? An alliance! Absolutely! I'm sure we can find someone worse to kill. So we're now allied with them. We share all the uh, the data about the maps and our sensors and everything like that. Brilliant. We've got the alliance down here, um, which we can rename. So it's called the Yardrick League currently. That's a boring name. We're going to call this the um, MJ Coup Axis. There we go. That's our alliance. We can add more people to the alliance. We can also vote to form a federation later when we get uh, better technology. So, order's finished. Oh, I think that's you guys, right? No. Oh, there we go. That's that's us colonizing. So, now that our fleet is in orbit over here, now they're repairing. But I'm going to say, hey, could you upgrade? Because it costs 173 minerals. But we'll upgrade you to the version that has the better engines, the better sensors, and has armor, as opposed to the baseline module a model that doesn't, right? They just have two reactors and the three small lasers. So these are going to have the three armor plating, the better guns, or the better engines, which includes evasion, not just speed, and the sensor range, which I'm not sure if it matters a big deal one way or another. But it's definitely an upgrade. We don't have another big military tech um, in the queue right now. So this is going to be the best upgrade for a while. So we'll upgrade them. And then we're also building two more ships. And that will be a relatively decent fleet to maybe clear out a wee bit more. We can certainly take out this void cloud. Maybe there'll be some interesting debris to experiment with over there. We don't have a project for anything like that, but that's okay. I like it. Okay. Bit of a wonky start with the, the, the horribly failed um, anomaly scans. I mean, we tried to push things as much in our favor, but that 15% chance was still rough. And those those were just, I think, just higher difficulty. You'll find a lot of anomalies that uh, the, the failure chance will be very, very low, in fact, uh, or almost actually zero, potentially, because of... Um you know, because of skill and, and difficulty levels and different things. So just a bit of rough luck there. But hey, we've got three colonies. Actually, fact, neither one of our neighbors has another colony yet. Now, these colonies aren't doing a whole lot yet because they are still relatively new with not a whole lot of population. I suspect that um, this one's going to be a lot better. The fact that we're dropping... Yeah, that's going to be a four food tile. Excellent. I don't think you grow faster for food. I, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Like, you know, it says... Surplus food will increase the, increase the growth rate. I guess so. So the more surplus food, the faster it'll grow. So 
Um, re we should rename this because that's going to be hard to say. You are going to be a Norwegian Blue over here. So Norwegian Blue, considering the fact that I landed on this, is going to generate more excess food right from the, the start. So it'll should reach its next population faster, which means then we can build another hydroponics farm on here. And then we'll be working seven food quite quickly and presumably that will let us grow quite a bit. So even though it's a smaller planet, I think we'll actually get a stronger start. I wonder if I should have landed somewhere else. In hindsight, probably right on top of here, actually. No, I did. No, oh, that's right. That's the two from that. Yeah, I wanted that because the adjacency bonus later on is going to be good. So this is a bit of a slower start, but a much stronger later thing. It's a bigger planet, good adjacency bonus. And the same, when my population pops, it should work this spot here with the bonus food. Even though minerals are always good, too. I can't, like... Oh, I can change you. Hold on. I forgot we've got one unit of population already. No, you work that right from the start for a little bit more growth. So this guy will grow faster and then work that. It's only... Well, then you'll work this. This is cl this is clearly a better tile than that one. Jeez. Okay. I forgot that I actually had a unit of population. I thought I was waiting for my first one. didn't realize I could move off of the reassembled ship shelter. Okay, so I've really... I, I didn't grow Charlesy quite as well as I should have. That's unfortunate. Anyway, I really have to wrap this up. I got a live stream to go and do. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.